For example, in the US, it takes me three days to send funds to a friend, you know, to pay him back for dinner. That, why can I send them an instant email, an instant animated GIF, but three days to send them, you know, $30? So I think we're going to radically see the transformation and the digitization of the way that we transact and the way that humans and machines share value. My name is Elizabeth Stark. I am co-founder and CEO of a company called Lightning. We're building a protocol called Lightning Network that is scaling Bitcoin and blockchains uh, by using a layer two of transactions uh, that can enable instant high volume and extremely low fee transactions that are still decentralized on blockchains. So I have a background at the intersection of law and technology. And one of the areas that I've been really interested in for a very long time is open source decentralized protocols. And I was teaching at Stanford back in 2010, and a teaching assistant for the class sent me an article. Um, she said, oh, there's this really cool thing. It, it's open source money. And I, I remember thinking, open source money, isn't that cool? But it'll probably never work. What I really should have done was bought a lot of Bitcoin back then. <laughs> um, but no, it was one of these things where I said, oh, this is an interesting concept. I need to learn more. So I started reading and learning all about it. And there's a point at which it's almost like you can't stop. It just gets so interesting and you're so fascinated by it and you just want to learn more and more and more. And even, by the way, to this day, it's, it's, there's, there are new developments, you know, there are new ways of solving problems, new approaches, and it's, it's very exciting to be in this world. The way that Bitcoin works is that every full node on the network knows about every other transaction because what is a blockchain? Well, it is a distributed public ledger of all transactions that have ever occurred. So naturally, if I spend you know, $5 buying a coffee and then millions of people are doing this you know, every day, it can be quite inefficient for everybody in the world to know about every time I've spent you know, 5 euros, 5 francs, $5 to buy a coffee. Every 10 minutes, there's a new block with all of the transactions. If you try to confirm your transaction prior to the 10 minutes, um, there's a risk of your funds being what's called double spent, and you don't want that. You want to know that your funds are not um, effectively going to be spent again. That's the nature, and that's the real importance of what public decentralized blockchain solves. If I spend it once, it cannot be respent. What about a world in which you have machines um, that want to pay other machines, or maybe I want to pay a few cents every time I read an article or browse a video? Well, it makes no sense to pay one cent and pay a fee that's you know, 10x that. So the technology behind Lightning can solve for all of these because it enables this technology that's instant, high volume, and low fee. The goal is to really bring in the new generation of technology for Bitcoin and blockchains, where you have the second layer on top of Bitcoin, where you don't have to go to the blockchain every time you transact. Uh, effectively, what we're doing is we are um, deferring the broadcasting of transactions to the blockchain, but doing so in a decentralized manner where a variety of participants can then send transactions to each other, it can then be instantly cleared. And then if there's ever an issue, if somebody you know, tries to steal your money or if they go offline, you're always secured by the underlying blockchain itself. So the security of the blockchain is still securing you when you're transacting with this technology. We've learned a lot of lessons along the way. Um, there are a lot of experiments that failed. Uh, and there are a lot of security lessons that we've learned that we'll continue to learn as well. Uh, one area that I'm particularly passionate about is that of user experience. Right now, the technology is not very user friendly. It's not super easy to use. So one of our hopes with building out the Lightning Protocol and the technology is um, because you can instantly send funds and you can abstract, you know, there's a concept in Lightning called payment channels where you open a payment channel, you go to the blockchain, it takes 10 minutes, and you're on Lightning. Then you can send between participants. So I can be connected to one person who's connected to another, and then I can send funds to the other participants on the network without being directly connected. The cool thing is, by the way, the intermediate nodes cannot steal your funds. It's still decentralized. There's not counterparty risk in the way that we've had it previously in the financial system. But that's all to say that this complexity, all the technical details, can be abstracted away from the user within the software. The software can do it automatically. And the user can just know, oh, OK, I just sent you know, a dollar, a euro, a franc, uh, five cents. Uh, why right now is it so easy for me to send, say, an animated GIF, uh, an email, you know, a text message 
but I can't just send a small amount of value. The internet doesn't allow for that yet in any user-friendly way. So one of my hopes is that the technology behind Lightning can enable that both for humans, but then also for machines. Uh, why is it, you know, machines don't really have the capacity to hold value right now. Um, why is it the machines just cannot transact? Machines don't have bank accounts. Uh, given an age where we'll have more and more machines performing more tasks, our technology can enable that as well. People often say that necessity is the mother of invention, but I like to say that necessity is also the mother of adoption. Because if there's a real use case that people you know, need a technology for, well, they'll start using it. And right now, we've seen in a lot of countries around the world where there are major currency inflation issues, or where people are struggling, or where the government's maybe trying to either take away cash, or it's very hard to obtain a bank account. Um, the use cases for a technology like Bitcoin are becoming greater, and I think we'll only see more of that as the technology and the usability develops such that the average user can use it. And by the way, users might not even know that they're using the technology. I think there are a lot of parallels with the early days of the internet. Um, you know, of course, success is in, in no way guaranteed. Uh, one day we may look back on this and say, oh, wasn't that great? You know, but if you ask me, I think there's undoubtedly a huge amount of progress that has already been made, and there's something here. I find it hard to believe that I'm going to look back in 10 or 20 years and say, oh, none of this ended up happening because we're really seeing a new way of transacting value on the internet.